What's up? My name is Corey Allgood. Uh, I recently was playing around with Reaper and was able to get kind of a fun thing set up uh, where I was able to run my guitar DI into my interface in, into Reaper recording. And f using that DI, I was able to uh, run some uh, MIDI instrumentation uh, while playing my guitar. Uh, so I was able to basically hear what I'm playing on the guitar run through my MIDI synths. Uh, I posted a clip of it on TikTok and Instagram, and it got a little bit of attention. People wanted to know how I was doing it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little video on how to do it. It's actually really simple. So right now I have my guitar here. That's just a Schecter C1 Apocalypse. Uh, I got it in the Sweetwater uh, exclusive Purple Rain finish. Uh, it's got a Sustainiac on it. Now, if you're doing a lot of synth work from your guitar, a Sustainiac is going to be great, but it's also not uh, necessarily necessary. That was a bad sentence, wasn't it? I'm doing this off the cuff. Bear with me. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I have my guitar plugged in, is I'm going to go ahead and make a track. Now, my guitar is plugged into input two of my interface, so I'm going to set my recording source to input two. We're just going to check the DI really quickly. Sounds like we've got some audio coming through. Uh, one thing that I do want you to note is uh, my input levels down here on my uh, my meter is sitting right about eight, negative 18 dB or so. If I uh, really dig into my strings, it should clip uh, as high as negative six, but should not go higher. I'm a little out of tune. But that, that should be fine for the purposes of this video. It's just a quick and dirty one. So I've got that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add an effect to the track. And what I am looking for is called Retune. And I just search for it with uh, my categories up here highlighted. It comes right up. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and click Send MIDI Events When Pitch Changes. And because there's a bit of latency going on, uh, I want to take my window size and I want to take it down. You're going to want to experiment with uh, the window size here. You want to get it as small as you can without sacrificing too much. Uh, like, I think that the default is 100. And you'll see that I've got like an E and you might hear a little scratching. I'm not sure if that's coming through. Uh, but if I bring it down to a 10, it doesn't recognize my E anymore but it happens a lot faster. So with that, uh, now I have seen a couple of people come and play with this stuff. I'm not an expert on this. What I would encourage you to do is go ahead and read through some of the documentation on this specific plugin and see what algorithm really suits best. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and do simple windowed fast and that should be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and make a second track here. Now that I have my second track, I'm going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to say Guitar Synth. And I'm going to name this one Guitar DI. Now that we have that, there's a little route button here. Now, if you've never done routing in Reaper, uh, basically what this does is it lets you send signal from this track to other tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new send going to guitar synth because we want the MIDI information sent to that, that track. Uh, audio, I'm going to send none. For MIDI, I'm going to send all. What you should see now, if I pluck a string down here on the guitar synth meter, you should see a little MIDI note uh, jump up like that. Mine is yellow. So now that we know that we have MIDI coming through, I'm gonna go ahead and add a synth. Now I've been using a lot of east-west plugins. Uh, so uh, just for grins, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do, I'll do a piano just to kind of show uh, what we're doing. So under keyboards, I'll make sure I've got the installed and license checked. I'll say grand piano, let's see, what do we have? Piano strings might be fun. So it takes a little bit to load. These are big 
thing, uh, plugins. So if I go ahead and uh, pluck a note, As you can hear, we're getting piano and string notes uh, when I pluck the guitar. Now from here, you have two different ways that you can kind of go about what uh, uh, doing, well, actually you have a lot of different options here. Uh, so what, we're, what, what I wanna do is I wanna focus in on the little video that you saw in the intro. You saw one section in the intro where I played the guitar and all you heard was synth. And then another section, uh, you saw me playing guitar, you heard the guitar and also heard a synth layered with that lead guitar. And if you didn't hear it, go back and listen when the song really kicks in. Listen, the left side should have my guitar and then the right side should have some, uh, I believe I used a violin for that. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is I wanna do just synth for just the moment. So I'm gonna open that route window back up and up here it says master send. If you uncheck that, all of the signal from that track no longer gets sent out your master. So if I go ahead and just play a couple of notes, you notice that there's no guitar anymore, which is fun. Uh, now, if you wanted to do what I did in that, uh, that video, we'll go ahead and go back into the route and we'll turn master send back on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw an amp sim on here. I think I've got uh, Fluff's little thing. Yeah, the amped roots. And I'm gonna go ahead and mute the MIDI track for now just so I can kind of dial in a whatever tone turn on our gate and our drive, crank the level. I'm gonna bring up some mid, some high, some presence, back off with the low, let's see what we got. Yeah, so it sounds like we've got usable. I mean, I'm not going for perfect right now. I'm not much of a tone hunter in general, which I should fix, but that's for another day. Uh, because it is kind of more of a lead sort of tone, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little delay in here. Uh, I'll just use a preset. We'll go best of analog tape echoes, and let's see how that sounds. All right. So if I go ahead and unmute that guitar synth. And there you go. So now that we figured out how we can play the guitar synth thing going on, uh, you're gonna wanna probably have uh, a little run through on how to record. Now, one way that you can do it is just how you've, you have it set up right now, uh, either with the master send on or off for your DI track. Um, if you record this uh, and just leave that DI track there, uh, it will go ahead and uh, pick up all of the MIDI um, on the uh, other track when you do playback. So if I go ahead and just uh, record, you know, whatever. So if I go ahead and play it back now, you will hear that. Now, in some cases, that will be good enough. Uh, now, if you're doing this as kind of like a, a more focused writing session sort of a thing, I think it's probably gonna be better if you, uh, if you do actually capture all of your MIDI because one thing that you've probably noticed so far is when I go and play a note, you're gonna hear some notes that don't necessarily fit in well. those little off notes. Uh, so that comes from the, the synth picking up things like string noise or mutes or, you know, just little noises that you naturally play or make while you're playing guitar. Uh, so uh, 
if you were to go ahead and record your DI and just run it through the synth, chances are you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to make it perfect because you're going to get a lot of those weird incidental notes. And most of the time they're going to sound really bad in this context. So what I think you should do if you're going to use this as a, a tool is on your guitar synth track, go ahead and right click your arm disarm button. And you want to go down here to record output and you want to record the MIDI that it outputs, and then you go ahead and arm that track. Yeah, so then you go ahead and arm that track. Now if I was to record something, And there we have, and now I can actually go ahead and if I want to, I can mute the guitar DI track and just listen to just the MIDI that we captured. So not only are there some actual mistakes in there, but there are some incidentals like we were talking about. So I can go ahead and get rid of this bad note here. I can get rid of that extra note that it kind of threw in there on us and stretch that out just a little bit. So let's see. And see, we got a couple more incidentals down here. So we can go ahead and just get rid of those and it'll start to sound a little better. And that was my mistake, so I can go ahead and fix that. Oh, another little incidental. And that comes from, again, little things that you tend to do naturally when you play, like little slides or bends that will wreak havoc on MIDI. So kind of break a lot of habits if you're going to be using this tool, which I honestly think is kind of a fun challenge. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, and all of a sudden we're starting to see our little MIDI piece take shape here. And that's it, that's the whole thing. That's, that is how you get Guitar DI into your MIDI synth. Uh, now, the big advice that I'm gonna give is kind of a reiteration of what I said. Play as clean as you can, Try and avoid vibrato, try and avoid bends, try and avoid slides. Uh, play as clean as possible and be prepared to edit whatever you do. Uh, the one thing, that, oh, and also one big thing that I forgot to mention already is um, the synth doesn't do a very good job of picking up when you play multiple notes at once. So if I go ahead and arm the DI track again, and let's say I just play uh, like a an E minor uh, dyad. Note that it's not picking it up. Now, because it struggles with some of the lower notes with the faster latency, I'll go ahead and try it with an A minor dyad. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and mute the master send on this so you can really hear what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. You hear that? It sounds really bad, right? Uh, so the big drawback to doing this method is you do very much want to play single note, very clean, no vibrato, no bends. Uh, you want to make sure your string noise is in check. Definitely use like a, um, a Jimmy clip or something to kind of mute your strings past the nut. And I'm over here playing with a Floyd Rose. I would recommend not doing that unless you have no noiseless strings or springs, excuse me. Uh, but that is it. That is it in a nutshell. Spend some time kind of experimenting with it. 
let me know down in the comments how it's working for you. Tell me uh, if you come up with any uh, better methods for doing any of this stuff, if you kind of overcome any of the hurdles like stream noise or anything like that. Uh, I would love to hear it. Uh, and if you end up using this to kind of make any little demos or anything that you post videos of on Instagram or TikTok or anything, tag me. I want to hear. I The whole reason I make videos like this is I want to hear your music. So let me know. Anyways, uh, I think that's all I got for you today. Thanks very much. Have a great day.